Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome, uh, a warm welcome to everyone as the weather warms up a little bit. Um, uh, to this event where we're going to celebrate uh, three outstanding colleagues uh, that have been recently promoted to associate professorships. Uh, Wenjuo Wu in industrial engineering, uh, Meng Deng in agricultural biological engineering, and Andres Arieta Diaz, who's not yet here, but he'll be here shortly. Uh, from the School of Mechanical Engineering. I think uh, the heads in the, the room will join me in agreeing that this is one of our favorite events uh, of the year uh, because we get to do three things. We get to celebrate, we get to share, and we get to collaborate. We're, of course, celebrating the success of these colleagues who, after many years of slogging hard and difficulties, they've achieved a lot uh, to be in a place that they've been promoted uh, you know, with tenure. So that's a great achievement, so they get to really talk about that. Uh, but a second side that we like about this series is because those that we are celebrating get to talk about the secrets of their success. Uh, there are many grad students in the room. There are many uh, other assistant professors in the room who will be uh, in your shoes uh, in the coming year. So uh, it's a great opportunity to kind of distill back and think about what is it that you did right? What decisions uh, did uh, these uh, great colleagues make that helped them succeed and so on? And lastly, it's an opportunity for collaboration uh, because uh, our colleagues that we're honoring today are also going to be talking about their future vision, the next phase in their career, great things they're going to do. And because we have so many other colleagues uh, who are in the room, it offers a great chance for collaborating with them in the future as well. So without further ado, I'd like to call upon Professor Yuwer Nyi from the School of uh, Industrial Engineering to introduce our first uh, honorary today. Yuwer? Thank you, Arvind. Um, congratulations to all the outstanding associate professors who are highlighted today. And I will be delighted to have this opportunity to introduce Dr. Wen Zhao Wu and celebrate his success today. Um, Dr. Wu has uh, joined Purdue IE in 2015, and currently he is the Ravi and LRR uh, Tower Rising Star Associate Professor in our school. He has received his uh, bachelor degree in electrical engineering in 2005 from the University of Science and Technology of China. Uh, his master's degree is in ECE from the National University of Singapore in 2008. And in 2013, he got his PhD from Georgia Tech uh, in the material science and engineering. Dr. Wu's research interests include the design, manufacturing, and integration of nanomaterials for many different applications, including renewable energy, uh, electronics, quantum devices, and wearable sensors. Uh, he is a very accomplished scholar. Um, he published over uh, 100 journal papers, and he also has over 20 patents uh, currently available for licensing. It's a, quite a, a, a astonish uh, record. Uh, of course, after he has joined Purdue, uh, he is, uh, his work uh, has been recognized by many awards, and I'm just going to name a few. Um, 2019 Society of Manufacturing Engineers, Barbara M. for some outstanding young manufacturing engineer awards. Uh, and later on, also in the same year, he received uh, Emerging Investigator from the Journal of Materials Chemistry. Uh, he also later in 2020 received Young Investigator Award from the AARO, and of course, an NSF Young, uh, the Early Career Awards in 2021 is a great highlight. Uh, and this year, he also received uh, the College of Engineering at Purdue, the Faculty Excellence Award for Early Career Research. It's a quite a, a record uh, for such a, um, uh, researchers. And I would like to also uh, highlight that uh, his work uh, have impact many different technology that we uh, in probably currently and also in the future that we'll see in our daily life. This will include uh, self-power wearable sensors uh, for monitoring health status, um, scalable nano manufacture atomically thin materials for high-speed energy efficient nano electronics and quantum devices. And also uh, example uh, include biomass materials-based renewable energy harvesting for decarbonization. 
So now it's my great pleasure to present to you Dr. Wen Zhao. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, first morning. So thanks, Yuvan, for the very nice introduction. Thanks, Owen, and everybody in the college uh, for, in, for, for this great event. I still recall my uh, first attendance of this event like six years ago when, I, uh, when we celebrate other outstanding colleagues. I think I learned a lot from those interactions. And as I talked to Owen uh, early on, I think um, um, a very great thing that I have been enjoying during the past six years here in the college at Purdue is that usually I got unsolicited advice and help from many senior colleagues. And I think that's what make uh, part, I think a major part of my success, if I have done anything successfully here, that is actually because of this help I received during the past few years from my colleagues in the school and also from the, college, from the entire college and also from the entire university. So I'm going to share with you my, um, uh, uh, what I have been doing here at Purdue and also a little bit about my experience. And maybe hopefully those things will be uh, helpful and useful to the uh, colleagues, young colleagues here and also the graduate students. And at any time, if you have any questions, just you can uh, uh, send me an email. And if you have, uh, would like to talk, I'd be very happy to talk with you. So my topic, my research currently um, a focus on, on, on developing or establishing the nexus between uh, artificial intelligence, nanomanufacturing, and the human. So I, we want to establish these nanomanufacturable um, materials, devices, and technology to benefit humans, uh, uh, human society. And, uh, and recently, we also uh, started to leverage the power of um, artificial intelligence data science to help us design better materials uh, come up with more efficient manufacturing processes and also more um, powerful and uh, uh, effective devices that can serve the purposes. And I think uh, a, a subtitle is a not so random walk across engineering boundaries. Uh, maybe you can uh, tell that flavor from the first slide. So as Ruben shared with you that my background is actually kind of a little bit diverse. Uh, I started with electric engineering, uh, majoring in microelectronics, and then I switched, I switched my interest to material science. I want to learn more about the very fundamental basic science that leads to the powerful chips. And then I end up here at Purdue IE, which is quite different from my background. I mean, uh, maybe six years or seven years ago, I never imagined that I would be here in industrial engineering. But after spending the past six years, I truly enjoyed my uh, work life here because I think this is uh, something that truly distinguished me from my peers in material science and material engineering. I mean, my friends with the same backgrounds, they're still doing outstanding work in material science, and I admire that, but I think what I'm doing now is probably something that I could not imagine, but now I think I'm very proud of. So, uh, in nanomanufacturing, I mean, uh, uh, you probably have read a lot from the news that um, now the nation, the entire nation, and many economies in the world are now doing a lot of, uh, putting a lot of resources in manufacturing, especially in advancing those emerging manufacturing technologies. And in particular here for nanomanufacturing, uh, for, uh, that produces nanomaterials or devices in the nanoscales uh, with controllable uh, properties and, uh, 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 and the efficiency, uh, actually face a lot of fundamental and scientific uh, challenges. For example, how can we achieve this precise and production assembly? Okay, you need to pr precisely manufacture these materials. A very extreme case is to achieve atomic precision, right? So if you can put atoms at precise locations, organize different atoms into the same uh, 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 entity. And also when you have those material, how you can organize them and assemble them across different landscapes. And uh, there are many challenges here. For example, process limitations. Currently, many of the state-of-art technologies cannot achieve that precision. And because of the fundamental limitations, in many cases, you could not achieve that ordered assembly. And of course, in manufacturing, we talk, about, we talk a lot about the process structure property relation. And that fundamental process structure relations is actually un, is unclear and unknown to many of us in the in the nano manufacturing. So our approach, uh, we have doing some work in the past six years or so, 
trying to hybridize different uh, existing manufacturing um, uh, methodologies and also with emerging ones to try to tackle this problem. Uh, for example, we hybridize the bottom-up synthesis with top-down approaches to try to overcome these multi lens scale limitations. The second uh, uh, challenge is in the system-focused co-design. So it's very challenging for us to get uh, multi-performance optimization uh, uh, for such a complex process. This is actually, uh, I think, a very traditional IE problem. I learned that from my colleagues in IE during the past several years. Um, there are many uh, uh, existing knowledge in the traditional settings that uh, could be potentially used for achieving this multi-objective uh, optimization for such kind of uh, co-design problem. So we could uh, leverage some existing predictive modeling and uh, come up with uh, 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 new approaches based on the concepts of experimental design. So that's something actually uh, I learned before when I was a graduate student from Georgia Tech. Uh, uh, industrial engineering, so the building of IE in Georgia Tech is actually next to material science. So the experiment design at that time seems to be a very simple concept, but later on in our research, it appears to be a very powerful approach, and there are many things still unknown and I think exciting for us to explore. The third uh, challenge is in the tools, right? So uh, when you have the, a lot of experiment data, so I saw some of our students here, so you can get a lot of data here in your daily uh, research, but how can you really understand those data, right? Uh, a lot of machine learning work just maybe based on black box uh, type of modeling. You don't necessarily understand what's really going on in the physics and the chemistry aspect. So, but for us, it's different. We have to understand what's really going on in order to better design the process to produce the materials with desired property and structures. So therefore, we. Uh, uh, you, during the past years, uh, past few years, we collaborated with our colleagues in IE and also in statistics here at Purdue, uh, using the so-called interpretable machine learning, or in people, some people also call it uh, explainable machine learning approaches to help us really decipher the physics and chemistry uh, uh, behind those black box, black box issues. And uh, uh, we have some uh, interesting uh, stories to. Uh, to uh, uh, experiences to use this kind of approach to help us better optimize the nano manufacturing process for uh, materials such as 2D materials and also nano wires. And finally, um, because the needs for decarbonization and also for making greener future, the process itself needs to be energy efficient and also preferably using greener methods, for example, chemicals that are green and the process that are green and do not produce uh, hazardous uh, waste to the environment. And uh, that inspires our exploration into biomass and bio-derived materials uh, from the very beginning and using those materials for developing devices and, uh, and, and, and the materials. So I'm going to just give you a very quick snapshot of what we have been doing uh, during the past few years here at Purdue. Um, these, all of these examples uh, uh, actually represent our efforts and the dedication to explore those hybrid approaches um, uh, data-driven and uh, 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 for making devices that include bottom-up materials and top-down structures, as well as uh, those biomass materials, in many cases, uh, otherwise wasted material. For example, in this case, lignin is a, a normally dumped material during the paper making process. Most people focus on cellulose, but we successfully convert this lignin material into a stretchable uh, variable sensor that can help us monitor the heartbeat. And also, uh, in many cases, one thing I want to share is that um, even though I'm presenting today as I designed everything from the very beginning, everything as planned, actually that's not the truth. Most of the things we, most of our discoveries actually were unexpected, were unexpected. I never saw that we could develop this 2D tellurium material um, because tellurium elements has a very uh, string chain structure and based on that chain structure, you would never think about making 2D form out of this material because it's anisotropy. And I did not expect that. And, but at the very beginning, when I helped my student taking SEM, scanning electron microscope, um, an image in the material science uh, uh, department, all of a sudden, we observe a very small flake of ribbon type of material out of uh, a bunch of nanowires. And starting from there, we were successful and also a lot of work required to convert that process into a pure 
two-dimensional growth process. And now this tellurene material actually has already attracted a lot of intention, uh, attentions and interest from uh, uh, to other top schools and also from other uh, countries. And many people are now interested in this one for nanoelectronics, nano for quantum devices. And of course, the success of our research in tellurene up to this point also has a, uh, 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 has a lot of, uh, received a lot of help, collab good collaborations here uh, from colleagues from ECE, from the Peter Yates group, and also um, Dana Weissens group. So many, many good collaborations that help us to achieve what we can do now. So a uh, uh, quick snapshot of my research activity here at Purdue here. So I want to uh, emphasize again, all of this success were not possible uh, uh, if there are no good collaboration here. And I think Purdue, that's something I want to uh, emphasize, and I really want to highlight again, I think, especially within College of Engineering, I think the collaboration is truly outstanding. I receive, I think all the collaboration here, I have been working with other uh, colleagues, are all very successful. Of course, there are some, sometimes we have arguments, but I think in the end, uh, I receive a lot of help. I mean, academic discussion and arguments has always happened, and the, that's why I always challenge my students intellectually. I think one day I received a, a comment from my a previous uh, uh, master student. He, he, he told me that, I still remember that you keep asking me why for every question, for every point, everything I present in the slides. I think that's something uh, uh, maybe um, uh, uh, may help the student to think more critically of everything. And I also that's something I always ask myself. So uh, my mentoring activities here, so up to now I've graduated four PhDs. So um, one of them is doing postdoc, the other is being a faculty in China, and two working in industry. And also um, um, uh, I think I'm very proud of my undergraduate mentoring activities, especially the fulfillment and the joy I received when interacting with those undergrad students. So the, you, you, you feel you really can do something do something big that changes their, maybe their mindset, maybe their, maybe even their pathways or careers in their lives. And I have the opportunity and the privilege to mentor uh, 53 undergraduate students uh, during the past six years. And uh, um, I hope that those are good experiences for them. And uh, also the broader impacts uh, uh, and the engagement. And also I think one thing I want to highlight is that during the pandemic, the college uh, provided generous support to us, I mean, the first cohort of these virtual labs uh, faculty, and this work is still ongoing, and the purpose is to develop uh, virtual lab components for uh, 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 large lab settings, uh, especially, uh, for example, in manufacturing process, we have limited space. Every time we can only accommodate a few students, but uh, uh, with the help of the virtual lab development, hopefully in the future, we will be able to accommodate everybody uh, in the lab uh, in one setting. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody uh, in my group, and also all the outstanding colleagues here in the college, in the department, in the school, and also the staffs uh, here uh, uh, in, the, in, in IE, in college, and in pre-award, post-award, everything. And of course, thank you all for coming to my session today. Thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer questions. Yeah. We have uh, time for a few questions. Uh, uh, thank you, Wenzhou. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's very uh, astonishing to uh, see your achievement. So, uh, I see one slide you mentioned uh, you advised the 53 undergraduate students uh, from uh, IE, EC, ME, and BME different departments. So, I was wondering how do we kind of reach out and how, how yeah, how did you, re uh, you know, uh, have undergrad students from a, 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 yeah, a wide range of uh, dip different departments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think there are a few uh, reasons why I could do that. Uh, the first thing is the um, support from IE because our colleagues in IE, they are not rigid. They are like, oh, you cannot advise students from other de departments. We are always welcome you to do that. And also because we are doing multidisciplinary research and my background, as you can tell, is is actually I did not have a degree in IE. All right, we, the other day we were joking that many of new colleagues in IE don't even have a degree in IE. So uh, the second thing I think is um, uh, at the, in the beginning, um, as young faculty, I think um, um, we, we need to reach out. So uh, to actively uh, recruit those students, to let other people know we are here. 
Because, for example, in my case, um, maybe other students know I graduated from Georgia Tech with a material science degree, but if they look into Purdue material science, maybe they cannot find me. So they don't know I'm in IE here. So in the, in the, in the beginning, maybe you need to uh, reach out uh, more actively. And uh, 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 I think, yeah, that's, that's probably something you could try, I guess. You got them. Yeah, may I ask a quick question? Uh, thank you so much, Wendo. This is a really uh, fantastic uh, opportunity to see your work and highlight your success. I wonder if you share your secret about time management uh, with, <laughs> with the rest of us, <laughs> because I can see you have so much on your plate and uh, many, many projects and collaboration. How do you manage your time? I th honestly, I think I'm still learning that. Uh, I, that, that that's not something, uh, I mean, that's really honest. Because the other day I talked with my students that I, I told them that um, in the first maybe four years or so, before tenure, I was trying to do everything perfectly. So I want to get everything perfectly done. Then gradually I realized I could not manage that. It's not possible for me to do everything perfectly done. So I have to gradually adapt to get things done instead of get things perfectly done. At least get things done before deadline, especially for those important proposals like NSF and other things. You cannot miss deadline. So I think uh, um, we only have 24 hours a day. And of course, um, pre-tenure life is quite challenging, especially um, um, for colleagues with family, with little kids. Uh, I think, um, to that, I like to thank my wife, who is not here today, but and also he. She spent a lot of time taking care of my kids, and my family supporting that. Uh, so I still remember that in the first three years, I came to office. Oh, that doesn't doesn't see. I'm I'm not coming to office now. Okay, I <laughs> I came to office very late uh, uh, in the evening. Sometimes you have to do some things because you don't have that time. Um, and uh, without the support from my family, I cannot do that. But I think um, maybe. Uh, uh, at some point, we I need to change the mindset from getting things getting things perfectly done to get things done. I think that's more important. Uh, I realize that maybe that's not a hundred percent right, but uh, uh, I'm still learning. I guess. Thank you. Um, yeah. Any questions? Oh, well, that was a softball question. I'm going to lodge a complaint. Uh, <laughs> now there are many ways to. Uh, evaluate excellence of research and impact, one of which is uh, publishing, one, not the only way, but one of which is publishing in science and nature. So uh, my complaint is that uh, when you are published in science and nature faster than I can catch up to read. <laughs> so let that be on the record, right? So uh, uh, that's not a question, but uh, you know, I want to say congratulations to you and to the other two colleagues and all the uh, once we are celebrating in the uh, associate professor series. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mo. Thank you. I think uh, to that, uh, uh, first, um, I need to catch up with that. Uh, uh, to, 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 to match up with your... No, no, slow good... down the pace. Up, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I already have students complaining about, okay, you need to review my papers faster because uh, I need to graduate. <laughs> I think... Um, Purdue has a very large college engineering, and we have a lot of resources here, facilities, basic facilities, um, not mentioning the hardware, the tools, but also the staff teams. And uh, that actually did not become apparent to me until I talked to my colleagues from other schools. I think to that, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Great.